All right. Good morning. It is a Wednesday. Uh, I'm going to do the things I was talking about Saturday. Oops. Uh, and pull the extra ring out of this vertical engine, the ETX. Um, I already removed the radiator and popped the head off. The head still looks pretty good there. Um, it was when I relapped it in with the baking soda, it seemed to be fine um, as far as compression goes. But um, I decided that it probably had a bit much friction from the two rings, so I also already got the nuts off these studs because. Uh, I showed that last time and it's a bit fiddly to get them off so yeah so um, also because it was boiling over last time I was running it I'm Trying to decide. Pull this out and check. The water jacket is relatively clean in there. Okay. I don't know if we can see in there. There's the water jacket looks pretty clean, so that's good. Uh, there's so little water in this the system on this that I need to constantly be checking to see if it. is clogging up. All right. And uh, oh yeah, there's a lot of a lot of vertical scoring in that cylinder bore. There's a burr on the top edge of this piston, but I'm just take the letter dry sandpaper and do that, and then. Said there was a lot of vertical scoring in the cylinder liner, which the cylinder liner will pull out so I can grip it. Yeah, I don't know if you can see all the vertical scoring in there, but I'm gonna depend on the oil that's in there. And just run this water dry sandpaper around the inside. Um, that made a slight improvement. And that horizontal cross hatching should hold a bit more oil. So. Make sure we wipe that off real good. Let's see. Uh, 
tiny slot. That looks like it was the older ring. I honestly don't remember, but I must have moved the older ring down here and then put the new ring on the top. So we'll leave the new ring in there. And then oops. a lot less friction there so we'll try that out and when you reassemble this you can't put it all right back together until you get the push rod in place Make sure and put that other ring someplace. Actually, I bought a bunch of spare rings. Maybe I can just throw that old ring away. We'll see what I decide to do with that. Then the other thing I was thinking about, so I'm going to just tighten this up and uh, set it aside and reassemble it off camera because I'm also thinking about things to do with the cooling system on that to either put some more water volume in it or to um, see about converting it to oil, but we remember, and cool, this is in shot, uh, this is the ET7, and it runs really fast, so I'm going to just pop one of these governor's springs off. For the next run and see if that if it works like that um, all the horizontals seem to be just fine with one governor spring so I'm not too worried that it won't uh, have or that it will have any issues it should run okay and that would Definitely give it a longer run time if it runs a bit slower and cooler. Um, the other thing is, because it was boiling off so quick, and the ET1, the M90, if we remember that, uh, when I popped the head off of it, we discovered that the cylinder liner did not stand proud of the casing, the jacket. So while we're here, uh, I'm just gonna pop this open and take a look at it. Ooh, the spark plug gap. Um, let's see if I can hold these up real close. 
Right. So this spark plug that's wiggling is the one out of the ET7. And this is the one out of the ETX. And you can see the gap on the ET7 is almost smashed shut entirely. And it seems to have a piece of carbon in it. I'm going to take a screwdriver and very carefully, there, bend that open to a wider gap um, so that it doesn't build carbon in there and then it probably would ignite better. That might be our, uh, that might be our problem right there, but we'll see. Uh, I'm still going to pop the head off and check to see if the water jacket is. getting sealed properly by the head gasket or not and uh, I haven't had this head gasket off so all the bolts are very tight but as you can see they uh, obviously expected the ET7 to run a little bit hotter uh, than the others because they added the cooling fins on the head here and none of the other engines have these cooling fins on them so alright so you can see for the this engine I think has the lowest compression because it's got the biggest extra valve body over here outside the combustion chamber. Um, aha. Remember that all the loose bolts are going to be loose and don't drop them on the floor. Oh, and look at that. It's just got a very deep spark plug hole, and I am trying to see where the hole on the side of the spark plug hole, it, or spark plug is, for the valves here to vent into the cylinder. That explains a lot. Um, but the intake here comes in and then you can see it goes down into this second valve body here and it's got to have a chamber or a channel from here straight into the spark plug hole. So um, I honestly was expecting for there to be a much bigger recess in here so that the valve body would be venting more directly into the cylinder instead of through that tiny space by the spark plug hole. But um, if we push that in, all right give it a feel and while this is open tilt it around and look inside nope there's no no scoring on the side of the cylinder in there so the wrist pin doesn't seem to have shifted off the side uh, like in some of the other engines to start scoring the cylinder wall um, running my finger across here I can feel it's a little bit proud there like it should be and if you look at the cylinder gasket or the head gasket there you can see there's a definite ring around it from the 
cylinder liner, so that must be sealing just fine, um, which is good. So, just slip that back on there. And I don't know, with that narrow passage in the, for the intake, I wonder if maybe the reason it seems like the adjustment on here is so sensitive is just because there's a very high vacuum in the engine from the restrictive intake system on it. So, all right, those are all in, so do our head bolt tightening pattern. Is that um, let's see I guess since we're busy taking heads and off and checking for loose wrist pins I suppose I could pop the ET6 open too. Alright. Um, because there's so. Oh, hey. I don't have clearance for my screwdriver to get on that spark plug. Well, that's. Cool. All right. Um, oh. Okay. Well, so I was gonna just pop the head off this and take a look inside, but um, this governor linkage is connected from here and then bolted on the side there. Um, to this big brass piece, so we're going to have to be careful, I think. Oh, and this bolt is... Oh, right, okay. This bolt can't be tight. That's an interesting design. Uh, well, as you saw, when I pulled that bolt out, the pivot here is just on that bolt for this uh, valve actuate or the valve lifter here and so that bolt cannot be tightened when we tighten the head down again or else that lifter won't work um, which is on a small engine like this fine but for a big engine that would be a disastrously foolish design decision because you'd have this whole section from that bolt to that bolt with no pressure on the head gasket. So especially the higher compression you get, you just get blow-by through that space. But. And that gasket would b burn out right there real quick on a bigger engine, but oh, this bolt was not particularly tight either compared to the others. Uh, certainly was adequately tight, but
All right, so the head on this ET6 is very crowded, you can see. Uh, so the intake valve here is set into the head because uh, these intake valves are modular. Well, all the valves on these engines are modular. There's a brass insert with the valve body, and then they just uh, decide which way the head, the valve seat and stuff should get pressed into the head. Uh, and the exhaust valve is put in from the top here. Um, so, and then they've got this intake plenum on the this engine so that it doesn't well, to get the valve out here where you can adjust it, and also because the exhaust is out this side. I think they should have put the exhaust on the other side here. That would have been... Oh, except that's the side where all the valve gear sits. The valve gear is over here. Uh, but there's definitely a ring there from the cylinder liner on the head gasket, so that looks like it's doing good there. Uh, I don't see any scoring on the inside there from a loose wrist pin, so that is good. I'll just make sure my head gasket is lined up. And get a couple of these shorter bolts in. to keep the head lined up. Alright, so I'm gonna have to remember that 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 this spark plug can't come out with my quickie tool here that I found out, but uh, this engine has been a real champ since I got it, so feel like I don't necessarily think there's going to be a lot of issues with it, so, all right, so we got that, oh, got to make sure all these pieces are in the right place as we reassemble this, so, there we go, uh, the other thing that and you saw I had to twist this around. You can see this uh, piece is threaded on this rod. So um, this is the, or this donut shape here is the piece that the governor interferes with to keep the valve open. So it lifts up and then this goes in under there to keep the valve open. So if you move that too much, then it won't hold the valve open properly. Um, and there's a threaded um, my brain isn't working this morning. Uh, that threaded fork there on the linkage, so if you decide that you need more valve travel, uh, you can thread this in or out, but you have to make sure that you still have um, the clearance here 
um, when you do that. Uh, there we go. There's the other long one. Clevis is the word I was looking for. I'm going to put one more turn into that clevis because uh, what I was watching is this. Okay, still in shot. So I was pushing the roller all the way down against the cam here and looking to see it. just visually looking for clearance on the exhaust valve to make sure that there's a space ever so slightly between the rocker arm and the exhaust valve so um, and you need that space there because especially on bigger engines as they heat up and the parts start to move around that gap will change and if it disappears entirely then uh, the rocker arm will hold the valve open slightly and it won't seat properly um, so and I don't know if that was that way at the factory because I was very careful keeping this in order when I popped it off, or if I accidentally twisted that uh, clevis 